This is perhaps my favorite thing in this machine here. I'm gonna single tap of that button, returns my bucket right back to where I want it. So now when I want to drive into this, all I gotta do is go forward and my bucket's in exactly the right spot that I want to go and peel that off. Say I was taking a set of pallet forks, right, and driving into a skid, coming in and then hitting this button, and then returning right back to my truck height. It's called return to dig, but it can return to a lot of other positions too, depending on what materials you're moving around. The six, a helping hand with your leg. Neil from Messix here, really excited to take you along on a trip that we were able to take here recently. The gentleman from Hydroforce invited us out to come tour their factory and see some of the prototype equipment that they had been working on. Hydroforce is a company that you may not have heard of before. They make electronic control valves for machinery. In case of this Crone Harvester right here, this hydraulic heart of the machine comes out of a Hydroforce factory that we're going to have a video tour of here in a future video. But today we're showing you a prototype piece of equipment. This company goes through and they build these industrial Legos that the equipment companies are going to use in manufacturing equipment. And in order to help prove out how those different Legos can improve how a machine works, they develop some prototype equipment that we're gonna take you through here today. The machine that you're going to see is a traditional off-the-shelf skid steer that they have removed all of the normal hydraulic components from and replace them with their electrohydraulic equivalents to show how those can impact the feel and operation of a machine. So the unit that you're going to see here today isn't from any particular manufacturer. It's not a machine that you're going to be able to buy, but more than likely you're going to see these technologies floating into other machinery on the marketplace here before too long. Hydroforce is specializes in electrohydraulic controls and um, you know, we see that market growing. We see customers going more towards electrohydraulic controls for various reasons, including you know ergonomics, operator comfort, uh, productivity, um, and and the fact that a lot of implements used on these types of equipment are going to be elect or already moving towards electrohydraulics. And uh, so we saw the opportunity for us to improve the controls on these machines because. Uh, today's uh, electrohydraulic solutions being offered by the marketplace are seen, I think, somewhat like uh, a degradation in like feel, yes. right? Yeah. yeah. As we've gone through generations of machines, my, my perspective would be a lot of our operators that we deal with are going to tell us, you know, when you went from hand and foot to a pilot, you lost a little bit of feel. And now as you've gone from pilot to electronic pilots, you lose that connection from the machine more and more. Right, right, exactly. And so for us, you know, wanting to promote and, and grow the and support the electro growth of electrohydraulics, um, we came up with a solution that you know would improve the responsiveness and and uh, decrease some of the hysteresis, which improves the quote unquote feel on the machine. That we 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 anticipate it would improve the feel on the machine. Um, and it allows us to also tune it, so maybe uh, customers who want it to feel slightly different can actually be uh, made to feel slightly different. Um, now, Hydroforce, uh, we specialize in electronic, uh, electronic controllers and electroproportional cartridge valves, but we don't specialize in monoblock spool valves, which is you know, typically the main control valve implement valve on a skid steer loader like this one. So we partnered up with a company called Roquette out of Spain, who uh, also supplies um, these monoblocks to the skid steer loader market as well as the CTL market. And uh, we worked with them to put together the monoblock, which we put into this machine, and then we took took out the electronics and we integrated that and did all the programming and set up the telematics. And, and that's what makes this machine kind of special in that um, there's no other machine out there like this. This is a true prototype that Hydroforce put together. We want to see you know, how it feels to the marketplace. So as a, as a consumer of equipment at this point, this isn't something you can come out today. This isn't a machine, a new model coming to market. You guys are very simply going out and prototyping new technologies in order to be able to market your products and services then to the major equipment companies that you know procure your different industrial Legos that they use in order to you know, build a functional machine at the end of the day. Right, right. We, you know, we ultimately, we think if we, we can make a better world by providing, you know, better controls for machines so that operators can enjoy their jobs more and do a better job and have more productivity, right? And the only way we can sometimes demonstrate that is to actually take a piece of equipment and actually modify it and upgrade it with our products or partner with other companies like Roquette in order to do that. Just to see what can be done. Yeah. So the look that we're going to be able to give you today is maybe something that you're going to see in the future. 
maybe four or five years down the road as new products are coming to market, some of the research and work that these guys have done in this machine today might end up in a piece of your equipment. So this machine is one of a kind here, right? Yeah. Uh, talk me through some of the things here that you guys have changed underneath the cab here. So the main thing we have done is we took out the main control valve and okay. replaced it with a Rocat monoblock with our own control valves going on either side of it to control the spools. We swapped out the ride control for our newer, uh, for our newer ride control that we've been advertising. And then the self level we changed from hydraulic self level to electronic sensors. And then the monoblock itself actually controls the uh, the level of the bucket to the level of the lift. So that's essentially this large valve assembly down here. And then this, really this entire thing. Yes. Correct, was really the heart of the machine when it comes to the boom bucket functions. Yeah, and then the auxiliary, which it also has really good control, it's just not being used. So. Okay, <laughs> yeah, not, not we don't have anything to run it today. And then the electronic portions of it that we were operating, say the, the app and everything is coming through some controllers that you guys have on here. Yeah, that's coming through our ERO, our telematics unit, which is right behind uh, the, the, panel the, the panel in the middle there. And then our, uh, our ECU itself is immediately to the other side of it and that's controlling the valves inside the block. Okay. So tell me some of the things that are different in this machine than its stock configuration. What am I looking at here? Sure. So first you have the auto level switch up there. Okay. Um, that keeps the bucket level regardless of what you do with the boom. Okay. Um, then over here on the joystick, um, you got your trigger back here and that'll shake the bucket. So okay. you get, if you got some wet dirt or something, you get that out of there. Um, you got return to dig here. Um, so you double click that and you can set a position. Okay. Um, and you can move the machine around however you want. And then if you single click it, it'll go right back to that position. So this is double click to set, single yep. click to return. Yep. Okay. So if you want to go into a pile over and over again, you can just click that and it'll go back to that same position. Okay. How, how does the machine remember where that position is? Um, so there's a few angle sensors, um, one on the bucket and okay. one on the boom. Um, and that'll be saved into the control controller when you double click that. Um, and then it'll just return to that. Return to that position. Yep. Okay. And the second button down here does a couple of things. Um, there's a float mode. So if you hold it down, it'll go into float mode. Okay. Um, so if you're back dragging or something, you can do that. So I've got float, return to dig, shake, yep. and self leveling to play with. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll check it out. with here is return to dig. Now, return to dig is a function that's going to go back and have that bucket return to a saved position. That's something that's pretty common in big construction machinery, but not something that you frequently are going to see in a skid steer. So if we take this bucket and we set it back down to this position right here on the ground, nice and flat where I would be pushing into this pile of dirt, I could double click the button right up here on the top of the stick, and this little flashing indicator down here is telling me that I've got a saved position. Now when I bring my bucket up, and simply tap that button again, the bucket returns right back into that position using those angle sensors. So now when I go forward, I'm right where I want to be in order to go into my pile of dirt. So I go in, and as I'm backing up again, I can just hit that button and automatically that returns right back into place. So in terms of doing repetitive tasks, smart automated functions like this, just make your life as an operator a lot easier, right? If you're a landscaper or a contractor or something and commonly going right back into piles over and over and over again doing material handling, that's one last thing that you have to eyeball and think about as you go back and forth using that return to dig function. If say I was loading up onto a truck or something too, I could take a high position like this, double tap to store that location, Say I was taking a set of pallet forks, right, and driving into a skid, coming in and then hitting this button, and then returning right back to my truck height, right? So a lot of cool applications for that, right? We're not just, it's called return to dig, but it can return to a lot of other positions too, depending on what materials you're moving around. 
this other one right here would be the trigger function on the front for bucket shake. This was kind of one of my pet peeves in a lot of these early electronic joysticks is the amount of, say, averaging that has to be done, right? If you're moving these things around too fast, you can get some jerky functions and stuff out of the machine, but there are times that you want jerkiness, right? If you're trying to knock the dirt out of a bucket, you need to be able to rattle that bucket hard in order to be able to get them out. Having a function like this on the machine, like these guys have designed, allows you to kind of have a soft feel to your sticks when you want that, but still be able to call up a, a rough function to knock that dirt out, right? So if we come up here, pull this thing forward. Now my pile is not particularly sticky here. Just come over and hold this down. I get a cool shake out of the bucket right there, right? Just electronically, the machine's doing that. I can push that little trigger and off it goes, right? I don't have to sit here and jerk the stick back and forth to do that, right? Again, this is a, a machine with sensitivity dialed back, this kind of shaking. Eventually, right here, the machine will stop responding, but going through and having a button to do it, I think is really cool. That's, that's an innovative way to use you know, many of the extra buttons and stuff that you often have on some of these electronic sticks. So my next function here is gonna be soft ride. So soft ride is very simply a hydraulic accumulator that allows the boom to bounce independently of the machine. It makes traveling back and forth in a skid steer a lot easier. The machine doesn't buck back and forth nearly as much. So by going into the pile of dirt here, curling this back, you'll see here as I drive, I. I buck around quite a bit. And if I come up here and I double tap this function, you can see there when it turned on, my boom sponged a little bit. Now when I drive, it allows the boom to bounce and it makes my transport a lot less jarring. Normally when you turn this on, you'll see the boom drop down and sag and they've been able to eliminate some of that in the way that this is put together which is cool. Um, you don't get that, that drop that often happens in machines when you enable that ride control. So cool that engineers and modern technology are able to look at that kind of stuff and actually address and improve upon it. Now, another ride control thing that happens here is when we push into this pile of dirt. And when you have that, that accumulator turned on and you go to dig, there I'm on. Oftentimes that sponginess in the boom causes problems for you when digging. And you can see a little bit of bounce of the boom as I'm coming up and out of the pile of dirt. But I can still get into the pile and really bury it and really fill it quite well. Um, I feel like I get less, I still have an accumulator in there that's turned on, right? But I just, I get less sponge out of it with it turned on. Now, one of the engineers and I here were sitting and talking earlier was like, okay, what else can this machine do once we have this technology in here and these extra positional sensors and stuff? We said, hey, you know, you, you can continue these concepts further and continue developing this machine with these new technologies on it and say, when the boom is down at ground level, shut ride control off automatically. And when you come back up again, be able to turn it back on and their ability to do some of that kind of stuff without introducing those drops and stuff that happen within the accumulator turns on is cool. Um, as a, say machinery enthusiast or sales guy, whatever you want to call me, um, I appreciate this kind of stuff. I, I think it's really cool when people can sit down and continue to push the envelope of what this equipment's able to do. So it's a function that's actually commonly seen on this kind of machine. The thing that's unique about the guys that we're working with here is their implementation of it, right? A lot of times when you look at the mechanics inside of a skid steer, you'll see a separate valve assembly and accumulator tucked off inside the side of the machine that does that function. And in the case of this kind of hydraulic brain that exists inside this machine, they're able to kind of wrap all of these functions into a single package that makes it take up a lot less space inside the machine. So from an engineering perspective, that thing, say, creates more space inside the machine for an operator or better placement of controls when you can have 
less space taken up inside the underbelly of the machine by all the mechanics in order to do these things. So floating right here is a single tap of that yellow button and you can see right there where that kicked on Again, just kind of opening up my boom circuit and allowing me to, to back drag this while smooth. Again, like mostly a standard skid steer function, just uh, it really cool when you think about it, right? The, the guys that go through and engineer this stuff to create these functions in a different way, I, I think is innovative in, in what they're trying to do here. So the next function we're going to test here is this machine self-leveling. Now, self-leveling of a boom is a function that you're going to find in other equipment. Generally, it's done hydraulically, and they have this set up a little bit differently. Because of the sensors that they have out on the boom now for return to dig, they're also able to do the functions for the self-leveling using those same functions as opposed to having to do it hydraulically. When you look at the guts inside of the machine, the hydraulics that it takes in order to do that self-leveling function are fairly complicated. It adds more bulk and complexity and that kind of stuff down underneath the cab. But in this machine, simply going and implementing that with these position sensors uh, allows it to be a little bit cleaner. It also allows it to work in both directions. Sometimes when you see this, this is a function that sometimes works going up but not coming down. Again, depending on how the underside of the machine was plumbed. In the case of this, you can get it going in all directions. So I'm gonna start with this off. So I'm going to sit up here with, with my bucket level. So I'm going to have it here bucket level with the function turned off. Now keep in mind this is a radial lift machine so as this boom goes up this bucket kind of pulls back and this is with it shut off. So you'll notice here that as I go up, once I get up here to height, my bucket is no longer level. Now, if I was loading something up high or if I was doing pallet fork work, that's not particularly desirable because the angle of those forks is going to change as the boom goes up, potentially dumping the load back on myself. I have self-leveling turned off. You're going to see how my bucket curls back as it goes up. <laughs> That's why I want self-leveling so you don't thump dirt on top of the cab. Now if I reach up here and turn this function on, as this goes up, I'm just pulling straight back on the stick, but you'll notice my bucket floor there stays basically level as it goes up and also as it comes down. So I have bi-directional self-leveling both up and down using positional angle sensors down there on the boom. Yeah, what really makes this machine unique in that case, it's not necessarily what it's doing there, but it's the simplicity that these guys are able to, to do this with using these valve packages down underneath the machine. So what do we got here? Um, so this is a, basically a web server you can connect to on the skid steer itself. Okay. Um, so to start off here, you just have your main screen and then your, your diagnostic screen. And this basically shows you any errors that are going on with the machine. Okay. So if a coil were unplugged or something were wrong with it, that light would turn red and show an error and tell you exactly what's going on with the machine. Okay. Um, you can also see the machine data. So this is a bunch of different parameters in the machine. You see the engine RPM, boom load, some other things. Um, so just a bunch of stuff you can see that's going on in the machine itself. So we have positional angles, there's your positional sensors, joystick mm -hmm. position, boom current. So that would be the amperage going to your solenoids, right? Yep. Cool. Yeah, and basically anything on the CAN network you could pull off into yep. this. Um, then if you log in here, with our super secret pin code. Yeah, don't tell anybody that. <laughs> um, you can go over to the control tab, and here you can turn functions on and off, okay. or you can even turn on this beginner mode which these two sl sliders down here control. And basically you can scale your joystick input so the machine can't go any faster than you want it to go. Okay, so these would be the things that I was playing with the auto shake if you didn't want that for some reason because of wearing your boom pins, for example. Right, yep. You would just be able to disable that on your machine and then not have it work. Yep. And then, okay. And then you're also able to do this remotely, right? Because you're essentially connected to the mach machine from wherever. Yeah, it's, it's possible the controller has 3G, 4G capability, okay. so you could set it up. So if I'm way. a rental yard, for example, I could dial back the capabilities of my sh machine a little bit yep. for a rental customer, but if I needed to raise that back up for an experienced operator, I mm -hmm. can do it remotely. Sure. Cool. Yeah. So in this case, I'm going to take his app here, and I'm going to enable force beginner mode. And then if I look at my boom speed here, 
you're going to notice how slow this moves now. So if you are a rental yard, for example, or trying to train a new operator, <laughs> you can get some ludicrously slow speeds here, right? But that allows me now to dial my boom speed back up if I move up to some a little bit quicker or cranked up the whole way. It's something that feels a lot more normal. So just giving you some cool adjustability for, for those kind of lockout type scenarios from a cell phone. And the neat thing is you think about this, because this is done simply basically with a web server here on the machine, these are functions that can really be done from anywhere, right? With some kind of cell phone modem or something, if you're a rental yard, you'd be able to actually dial in the machine's performance from another location, right? So you can send this out with an operator that may not know what they're doing or you know, find that you've got somebody more experienced that needs a little bit more out of the machine and actually dial the stuff on the machine remotely, uh, which is cool, cool technology. Special thanks to the guys from Hydroforce. This is the team that put this machine together. And I think it's really cool to be able to combine all of these different disciplines, the different things that these guys bring to the table. The time that we've all been able to spend out here together talking about what they've done and where they're headed with this machine is really cool. And it gives an awesome look into the future of machinery and how these things are being developed. So thank you guys for what you do. It's been really cool. I hope all of you have enjoyed kind of the trip out here that we've been able to give you to take a little peek behind the curtains on how all this stuff is made.